I'm Greg McShane and welcome to the International Motodrome here at Newcastle for the New South Wales Sprint Car Championships. With me, the Australian champion, the new Australian champion, Todd Wanless. Todd, a big win for you. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, it was exciting. It's good to do it in front of my, own, my home crowd and uh, it was just great for the team and myself. Now, a lot of pressure on you, especially when you come to meetings like this, the New South Wales Championship. Can you take it out? Well, I ran here last year. I uh, did the season in New South Wales last year, so I really feel like a New South Walesman adopted one anyway, so I think we've got a good chance. Well, he certainly should. He drove away from the nation's top drivers to win the national crown. One of those drivers was Gary Rush. The question is, was it the conditions on the night? Well, uh, not really. I, I, I think I didn't expect much more than we had up there, really, before we went there, but, uh, but you know, it was... Uh, a lot of people were complaining, but the one thing they forgot about, the guy that won it, he drove away from us all. So, you know, full credit must go to him. He'd done his homework a bit better than we did. Who do you think will be the front runners here tonight? Well, uh, as I say, I haven't been here this season, but uh, Skip's been winning everything up here, or winning everything in Parramatta and here. And uh, But, you know, at any racetrack in Australia, there's always five or six guys you have to beat. You know, there's Brooke Tatnell and uh, there's Todd Bonless is here. And, myself and uh, as I look around you know I haven't seen all the competition but there's always five or six guys you're gonna have to beat. There certainly is and Gary Rush a former New South Wales champion knows all about that. This event heat number one presented for your pleasure and entertainment by O'Brien Aluminium. Greg Russ the grid. Wayne Skippy a pole sitter on the outside of him Darren Jensen out of three Brooke Tattle. Four is Wayne Russell. Five is Bruce Hill and out of six Gary Brazier. Now Brazier hasn't had the best of evenings arrived a little bit late and this incident happened a little earlier in practice so as you can see there, Brazier getting caught up. Not very happy about that indeed. The car has been repaired and it's ready for a start now. Well, he's certainly in this one. All guns are blazing. Ten laps duration for the first qualifying heat for the New South Wales Championship. And it looks like our pole sitter got the best of it at the moment. It was Wayne Skipper, but not for long because Darren Jensen has now taken up the running and leads the field at the completion of the first lap. You can see a good move there by, uh, by Tatnell as he starts to make his way through the field. Car number 62, Wayne Russell, the touring car privateer also dabbling in sprint cars this year. Look at Tattle up the inside. Disposed of Wayne Skipper very quickly. Looked like a problem on, uh, on Skipper's car. Here comes Brazier. Now up into third place. So that's a great drive from him all the way from sixth place. Well, Skipper looks like he's got some mechanical problems. There were certainly lots of sparks coming out of the rear end of that machine of his. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if he's done a diff early in the early in the first uh, qualifying heat here tonight. They're very finicky, these diffs. They're quick change diffs. Allows the drivers to be able to alter the gear ratios and the setup on each of the circuits that they travel throughout the entire continent of Australia. In the meantime, Brooke Tattnall under a lot of pressure from Gary Brazier, getting air, plenty of air under the front wheels of that car, the O'Brien Aluminium car number 21, as he now applies plenty of pressure on second place competitor. That's the car number five on your screen now, the Shell Helix car, and of course that's driven by Brooke Tattnall. Brazier, of course, a former Australian champion, so a very, very capable driver and the uh, reigning New South Wales champion, so he's out to prove us some points here this evening. Look at him now, charging hard up on the back of Tattnall. Tattle to his credit though, driving very, very smoothly and uh, seems to be where the line is on this circuit. It certainly does, talking about the line on the circuit, it's going to differ throughout the entire evening because during the uh, preliminaries today, weather played havoc with the circuit throughout the entire day in the Newcastle area and the rain coming down off the hills in the uh, background of this beautifully presented Newcastle International Motor Drone. Right now you can see Brady just managed to close the gap just a little bit well, negotiating some, uh, some traffic very well there was Tattle, one lap left to go the white flag is on display, your leader Darren Aaron Jensen aboard the Titan sponsored machine number 36. Tatton looking up the inside, sticks the wheel up there. He can't seem to do much with it. Brazier hot on his heels. Across the strike they come. It's Jensen. Second place, Tatton. Third place. I can't believe this. That is Gary Brazier. A post race altercation there of some sort. We'll take a closer look at it on the replay. Well, we can see that Brazy was trying to get up the inside line, a last-ditch effort to try and beat Tackle across the line. He got it all wrong, got himself up on the berm on the inside of the circuit and ditched it in nose first. He's out of the car, though, and A-OK. -okay. Ah, oh, well, um, you know, I was sort of coming from the back to the front and Brooks sort of started pinching me line and tried to drive in underneath him and I hit his left, left rear wheel. The way I went. You're all right? Oh, yeah, no worries. The car's not too good, but... Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. 
Well, at least he can laugh about it, but that's the end of the night for Brazier. Heat number two on the circuit now, Skip Jackson and Bob Tunks, cars seven and 54 respectively share the front row of the grid. Next row, 46, Andrew Sackold. Next to him, 22, Carl Walter. Then on the outside of the back row, we have Queensland 16, Daryl Hodges. On the inside, 48, Anthony Orr. Well, we're under racing conditions. Jackson got away very smartly. Tunks, though, sparks flying from the back of his car. Obviously, uh, some sort of problem. There's Walter on screen. It was the, uh, the Meander Village machine of car number 48, Anthony Orr, also running a little bit wide. That's allowed John Shaw in the Caltex Haviland machine to get up the inside. Here, though, is your leader, Skip Jackson, doing a terrific job out in front. John Shaw will certainly be applying a lot of pressure to many drivers throughout the entire evening. He got a gun start from the rear of the grid and has made his way up into uh, fifth placing already. A good battle there between two of the runners. Car number 16, that's the Foxtel entry of Daryl Hodges from Queensland, who was locking up the front wheel there in turn number one. Certainly shows that you need to be able to get the balance well and truly set out on these cars for all four corners. Certainly does. He's still running wide there as he came through turn two again on that occasion. So uh, the car obviously suffering some sort of handling difficulty. Andrew Seck there on screen with the uh, the time zone edit machine makes his way onto the main straight and uh, to reel another lap off your leader of course though is skip jackson from new south wales he's shown good form lately and he's showing it again here tonight here's bobby tunks in car number 54 the bright yellow machine down the main straight he comes again doing a good job but not able to do too much about our leader who's running away with it well there's plenty of daylight between first and second and second and third then we go back to the battle that's really well and truly in vogue at the moment and it looks like we've got uh, car number 66 john Shaw has made up a mile of room, a mile of ground, and he's now up onto the rear wheel of Daryl Hodges. Very careful, Daryl Hodges tries to tiptoe through that turn. Remember we made mention earlier on about the fact that the setup of the cars, and he certainly hasn't got the best setup because he continually locks up the front wheel. Skip Jackson coming into lap traffic with not too many more to go. Got around Anthony Orr in car number 48 very smartly indeed. Now he's uh, trying to negotiate his way through a couple of the other back markers. Very mindful though to keep away from that high line on the top wall. You can notice some of the marble there down low is where the uh, the power seems to be and Tattnall and Brazier certainly demonstrated that in the previous heat down the main straight he comes to grab the checkered flag a great drive from Skip Jackson in that one here comes Bobby Tunks grabs second place a good drive from him third place to Andrew Seckold and a tremendous drive from John Shaw up into fourth place third qualifying heat pole sitter Grant Tunks number 55 on the inside of former state and national champion Gary Rush car number two second row of the grid being shared by number 53 Peter Attard and number 11 Bob Jackson brother of the previous heat winner skip number 36 Jamie Jones on the next row on the inside on the outside of him is Bruce White car number 90 also included in this field is the newly crowned Australian champion Todd Wanless we're away in racing in this particular one Gary Rush the man they call the master blaster has simply blasted away from the start in this particular one aboard the Castrol machine. Boy, oh boy, you can see one of the cars there smoking its tyres quite dramatically, not getting the traction down. There's car number 11, Bob Jackson, now up into fourth place. Bob, of course, and Skip, uh, drivers that have come up through the compact speed car ranks, and his ability is really starting to show here aboard a sprint car. Well, the Newcastle International Motor Drone drying out somewhat after the moist conditions. Earlier, we saw a graphic description of exactly what happens when the uh, temperatures in the tyres, especially on the right rear tyre, happens to increase as is happening right before your very eyes the driver is Andrew Pizzetti the car number 38 and look at the air that he's getting underneath that front left hand tyre as he drives too wide and gets caught momentarily on the outside in all the marbles he's certainly throwing everything but lunch at the man in front of him Jackson Jackson shuts the door on him very very nicely Pizzuti again seems to run wide up onto the high line you can see how well he lifts that left front wheel this car is just not set up right for the Newcastle circuit uh, and you can see him trying to grapple with it here boy oh boy the car runs up onto the infield that is not the place to be when you're aboard a sprint car well lucky for Pizzuti he didn't have that car set up well enough to be able to drive onto the circuit proper otherwise he may well have found he didn't have the latitude necessary in the suspension to soak up the bumps as he went across the infield not too many laps to go now Australian champion newly crowned Australian champion Todd Wanless he was the driver in the blue car meanwhile on screen now Gary Rush car number two he's won this championship three times in the past in the last decade and he's also a former national champion no doubting Gary Rush's ability at all and down the main straight he comes again to put another lap down on this one not too many left to go hasn't he got a good gap over the driver in second place at the moment that is Grant Tunks aboard car number 55 on screen there now a very talented youngster and following hot in the heels of his dad Bob so down the straight comes Tunks to, uh, to put another one down around about three quarters of a lap left to go for Gary Rush aboard Castrol number two he comes down into turn number three for the final time boy oh boy this car is set up 
up so superbly here at Newcastle. Across the strike he comes, takes the chequered flag. In second place it is Grant Tunks and a nice pick up for third for Peter Attard. A good win indeed for Gary Rush, one of the hot favourites certainly for the 25 lap final still to come later in the program. Okay. Final to determine the New South Wales champion of 1996, including Australian champion Todd Wanless, Brooke Tatnell's there, Skip Jackson too, along with Bob and Grant Tunks. And of course, let's not forget the master blaster of going faster, Gary Rush in car number two. Now Lance, what's interesting here is that two or three cars rather won't be taking part in this one, the legacy of an earlier coming together. You'll see here now on the replay, car number 48, the Meander Village Machine. This is Anthony Orr, Orr from New South Wales, simply loses the car, lifts a wheel. Two innocent victims involved here, the Queenslanders, the Foxtel Machine of uh, car number 16, Daryl Hodges are coming together there and also not taking part in proceedings, Andrew Shirl. Well, 25 laps duration, our pole sitter on the inside line, there is car number seven, and of course that's Skip Jackson, and he gets a good drive down on the inside line, but look at that, somebody coming back up hard on the inside, and the driver I'm referring to was Jensen from Queensland. But here comes Gary Rush, he's put the challenge on nice and early. You're not wrong there, Lance Robertson coming up on the inside of John Shaw in the Caltex Havoline machine, so Rush already very keen to put the power down, back in fourth place at the moment, aboard car number 36 is Jamie Jones. Well, it was a short-lived glory because was now coming up into fourth placing as the car of uh, being driven by Andrew Pizzuti, but he's being hotly pursued by the newly crowned Australian champion. At least he was. He lost two positions there. Todd Wanless is now languishing back in sixth placing. But look at Skip Jackson. He's almost bolting away with this one. He's got quite a handy lead at this stage, of at least by three or four car lengths. But this is a 25-lap journey, Greg Rusk, and nothing's over until the checkered flag flies. Certainly not. Good battle going on there. Grant Tunks manages to sneak up the inside of his dad, Bob, and move himself one further forward. Keep an eye out also for Wanless. Wanless, the current Australian national champion. There he is on screen in the blue car. He's being hotly pursued by Brooke Tattnall. So Tattnall also showing good form at this early stage. Just ahead of him, of course, the newly crowned Australian champion, Todd Wanless, wearing proudly number one on his wing there and plenty of smoke coming off the wheels. Now under a lot of pressure from Tattnall, he dives down onto the inside line, gets up onto the infield and that certainly puts end to his charge at this early stage anyway. 25 laps duration, Greg Rusk. Anything can still happen as they now make their way down the main straight. Wallace's car certainly seemed to be suffering from some sort of handling problem and Tattle showed a good turn of speed. This is the battle for second place. At the moment Shaw holds it out in the, the Caltex Havoline machine but can you believe that? He's now been passed by Rush so Gary Rush showing a good turn of speed up into second place. He's got, uh, got the eyes on I think he'll be out after Skip Jackson right away. Well with a 30% winning record in the last decade that means three out of the last ten championships in New South Wales Gary Rush has certainly got the run on the board nice and early. But the man that's on the screen at the moment in his Caltex Havoline vehicle is number N66 and that's John Shaw doing a great job. Here comes Wanless. He's trying to get up on the inside of Pizzuti. Pizzuti won't give in. Wanless needs to take evasive action on the inside line and both of them finding finding themselves up on the extremely high line. That's allowed Brooke Tattnall to get up within striking distance. Tattnall now making a charge on the Australian champion. Will he be able to keep this pressure up? Tattnall's shell car certainly seems to like uh, the low line on this circuit here at uh at Newcastle, they make their way down the back straight again, here comes uh, Pizzuti trying to stick a wheel up the inside and he does it very very nicely, that has relegated the national champion one further back I don't know about that, I, I just I seem to think that there is possibly some sort of problem with the national champion Todd Wanless's car and that has been graphically demonstrated here, Tattnall now goes up the inside again, he's managed to get past him, Wanless comes back at him, a great drive from Wanless there so Wanless now sneaks back up again Well he drives in very deep indeed, that's allowed Tattnall now to get up the inside of him and Pizzuti, the driver who had all sorts of problems in setting his car up and now he's the lead in the sandwich. Tattnall just ahead in fourth placing, back in fifth placing as Pizzuti and the man on screen, the defending Australian champion Todd Wanless in sixth placing. Interesting to see how the circuit holds up here at Newcastle as we alluded to in some of the earlier heats this evening. There has been some rain. Wanless now trying to sneak up the inside of Pizzuti. He's got the power down. He's got the right line. Can he do it? He certainly does. Pizzuti runs up on the high line. That's hurt him. Can uh, Wanless shut the door? Indeed he does. So Wanless now up into fifth place, coming up into play in this one also is Jamie Jones aboard 36. We turn our attention back to the battle for second place and third. Shaw running third at the moment.
Newman takes the high line there a moment ago. That's hurt him. That's allowed Tatnell to come back at him. This Shell Helix car certainly likes the low line. And isn't Tatnell demonstrating that at the moment? He certainly is. A good battle for third and fourth placing at the moment. And third is still being held down by John Shaw. But Brooke Tatnell in the yellow Helix car is certainly a man on a charge. In the meantime, out in front, Skip Jackson is literally skipping away for it. Just in the foreground then. And now in the foreground again, our second place driver at the moment, former state and national champion Gary Rush in the Castrol machine. Shaw, to his credit, is managing to hold out Tattle in the battle for third and fourth. Here is your leader, the skilled engineering machine of Skip Jackson. One very talented young driver indeed. Came up through the compact speed car ranks and in recent years has showed good form of water sprint car. Regularly goes to the States every year and spends some time in uh, Knoxville. And in fact, last year was on the grid for the Knoxville Nationals. Car number two, Gary Rush in second place in carving through the slower traffic like a hot knife through cold butter. He's certainly got age and experience behind him, but I don't think he can run down our race leader at the moment. The good battle on the screen at the moment, right before your very eyes, the third and fourth placing, still being held down by John Shaw on the outside, only just at Brook Tatnell. A little bit of rain now starting to fall on this Newcastle circuit, but that's certainly not going to make any difference for our leader, Skip Jackson. This one just about done and run for him. He makes his way through turn four for the final time and across the line to grab the chequered flag. Gary Rush very smartly into second place there, almost got him on the line but couldn't quite do it and the battle for third was resolved in favour of John Shaw. I'm not all that unsure that Skip Jackson didn't have some minor mechanical problems on the line because Rush came on like the proverbial gangbusters. All that fears at bay, our 1996 New South Wales champion, Skip Jackson. Well, he's got skilled on his car and there's little doubt that Skip Jackson is one very skilled driver.